Welcome to Insight, a concise comment on current issues uh, from the Jubilee Centre. Uh, tonight we're talking here at our winter conference to Dr. Paul Chambers. Paul, thank you for joining us. Um, I wanted to ask you uh, first, politicians need, in a sense, public permission in order to enact policy uh, solutions, uh, perhaps even radical ones. And they won't do that if they know they're going to, to lose votes and so mm -hmm. on. What can be done generally to change the culture, to change attitudes, uh, so that there is more of this political space for policy solutions to the I problem of climate change? I think that's a really, a really tough question. Um, I mean, it's clearly not, there's no simple thing that we can do to suddenly sort of switch on mm -hmm. a massive change in public attitudes. Yeah. I mean, historically, I think people thought there was a, a fairly simple relationship between in, provide information, change attitudes, and then you change behavior or voting patterns and so on. I mean, it's very clear that that's not really the case. And we need a much more sort of complex engagement with people. Mm -hmm. And the government needs to learn in some ways from some of the tricks of marketeers about segmentation, about tackling different groups of people in very different ways and very specific messages. I mean, one thing that we've learnt, I, as you know, work for the government, although I'm speaking tonight in a personal capacity. I mean, one thing that we have learnt is that top-down messages from government are often not the best way to change people. If you ask people who they trust the least, politicians and journalists are very high up that list. So um, one of the things we've been trying to do is to get those messages disseminated through, really through grassroots organisations, so people hear it from their peers, from their neighbours, from locally rooted groups that they trust and that can engage them on issues that are much closer, closer to home. So that's one of the ways that we do it. But, it, but the process is very iterative, so the government can, can lead a certain distance, but then it needs people to, to be able to push the government, whether that's NGOs or other groups, giving the government some space to, yes, yeah. to, to move on one more step. Thank you. Thank you. And Paul, in terms of uh, policy uh, solutions, and, and clearly policy solutions are required because my individual efforts, changing light bulbs and so on, feels like just a drop in the ocean. Collective action is, is mm. obviously required to tackle the problem of, of global warming and climate change. Um, what would you say are some of the most promising policy uh, solutions or options out there at this time? Right, okay, well that's, that's a very good question. I mean, I don't think there's any simple single answer. I mean, there's clearly no silver bullet to this. C climate change really affects every aspect of national life. It's not just a sort of little energy policy compartment. So we need a really, really broad spectrum of policies that really hit every aspect of life. The real priorities, I think, are to tackle some of the really long-lived infrastructure, yeah. power stations, roads, airports, that the sort of thing that will be around for decades to come, because what we do now really sets the seal on what our emissions will be for, for many, many years to come. Yeah. Also, I think increasingly important that we make it really easy for individuals to engage and to act. Yeah. I mean, we've seen what happened with recycling when we made recycling very accessible and very easy. We need to do the same thing for climate change, for positive climate change behaviours. Thank you. And finally, uh, Paul, in terms of culture change and the need for policy solutions. Um, what role do you think Christians can and ought to play? I, I, would, I would single out two things really. I mean one is just really in terms of the attitudes and behaviour of, of Christians themselves, of church members. I think at the moment the churches tend to be lagging behind mm -hmm. a lot of the rest of the population and certainly a lot of the other sort of um, environmentally aware groups. And, and really the unique angle that we can bring to it is a willingness to take some tough decisions and some personal sacrifices based on this as a, as a sort of moral and ethical issue. Yes. The second is working with other NGOs and, uh, and, other, and other groups to take a much more active stance um, campaigning politically, yeah. influencing at local and regional and national level to, to again, on taking a very strong line on, on climate change as a moral and ethical issue and I think the church can really bring a very powerful voice to bear on that. Paul Chambers, thank you very much. Thanks.